Right now, what I want to talk about is we get a lot of calls. We get a lot of calls for trying to help out tenants. Tenants find space. So leasing or renting, depending upon what terminology you prefer. In commercial real estate, we talk about leasing, right? We talk about tenant leasing or tenant representation, landlord representation. Today, what I want to talk about is working with small tenants. But first, real quickly, my name is Mark Halsey. I'm the managing broker of Results Commercial Group. We're a commercial investment boutique firm. Uh, we work in a few different states. You can find out more about us at resultscommercial.com. I appreciate you being on our Results in Real Estate YouTube channel. I surely hope you'll subscribe. Um, I'm all about making sure I get you guys some good content that can help you out about the real estate industry as a whole and commercial investment brokerage. Let's talk about small tenants. So I don't know you guys, it seems like almost on a, certainly a weekly basis, we get one or two calls from a referring agent asking us if we can help a small tenant. So what's a small tenant mean? It's kind of what you think about in terms of it's a small business, they need to relocate, maybe they're going from their home into their first office or their garage into their first warehouse space or manufacturing space. And so we get a lot of these calls saying, hey Mark, can somebody on you and your team help out this tenant find a new space? It's tough. This is a tough one. This is why I'm doing this video. I'm doing this video so that I can explain this to the marketplace, what I mean when I say this is tough. Why is it tough? Why is it tough for a small tenant? I'm gonna give you just a handful of reasons. Number one, well, property owners, landlords, property managers, are not always terribly excited about working with small tenants, certainly not small tenants who are startups. Now, there's nothing wrong with not needing a lot of space. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. The issue that they have is number one, is the small tenant interested in a longer term lease? Are they well capitalized? Can the necessary improvements be made for them? And what is the risk for the property owner, right? That's what they're looking at. That's why startups are always something that makes them very, very nervous. They're always looking for, ideally, somebody who's going to be more established. But you guys, listen, here's the other part of this is that on the tenant side of things, when a tenant's out there looking for space, the landlord is looking for a, usually a longer term lease. But sometimes tenants say, I don't want to make a commitment for the long term. I'm actually looking for space for maybe, I don't know, maybe a year or two. And I don't need a lot of space because I don't want to overcommit to something. And in those terms, right, what's the length of the term, how much space do you need, that's where we can get into some challenges here. So it's important that small tenants understand that, first of all, yes, it's typically cheaper, less expensive to lease than it is to buy, but it doesn't mean that it's dirt cheap, okay? Because as you see maybe in some other leasing videos that I've done is that when we go into a leasing situation, we have build out, tenant improvement, tenant improvement allowance, TI. There's our big TI that we talk about all the time in our business, TI, tenant improvement. You guys, we talk about TI all the time because it's very, very expensive. It's the deal killer. And so one of the things we're always talking about to those, even the small tenant is, hey, small tenant, you gotta understand, even if you go take on two offices and a conference room and a reception area, and we need to redo that space with new carpet and new ceiling tiles and new this or new that, it gets very expensive. And not all landlords are interested in putting that money into the space. So tenant, small business, do you have the capital to put those kinds of improvements into the space? Now, if you're saying, I only want to lease the space for a year or two, you look at that and go, well, by the time I put the money into that and I pay my rent, is this really a good financial move for me or not? Or should I just stay put where I'm at? So those are some of the things that we're looking at. Now, what about the risks? Let me go back to the risks here a little bit. Let's just say that you're that small tenant, you're moving out of a really comfortable, financial comfortable, maybe even a house comfortable environment, getting into your professional environment, and you're looking having to sign a three or four or five year lease. And what about if that lease has a personal guarantee attached to it? So that landlord says, you know, listen, hey, you know what, Andrew, we're happy to have you come on in here and lease this space from us. Uh, but listen, I can't work with you for two years. We're going to have to look at a four-year minimum. And just so you know, we need a personal guarantee. And of course, that small business person might say, um, what does that mean? And well, that means if you go belly up, if you go out of business, you still owe me all the rent. If you clear your stuff out all of a sudden at midnight one night, 
I'm still coming for all the rent for the remainder of the balance of that term. That's your personal guarantee. Of course, a small business can look at that and say, that's a lot of money. And it's like, <laughs> it sure is a lot of money. It's a heck of a lot of money. And so we get those questions often like, well, Mark, do you think I can get away with a lease without a personal guarantee? And oftentimes the answer is maybe, okay? But not always because many of those landlords, they require a personal guarantee. Here's the other part. When we come down as representatives to represent a small tenant, and sometimes we have to say to them, you guys, not always is a small tenant assignment a good fit for a commercial broker. We're not here to sound like we're greedy or anything else. It's just the sheer mathematics of how we get compensated. Typically, a commercial broker is compensated when they do the deal, right? Just like a transaction on a sale, but it's also with a lease as well. And the way we get compensated, and this is important that everybody understands this. I like talking about this stuff because I want everyone to know how this works in our industry. But very often with leasing, you guys, a tenant representative is paid upon the signing of a lease their compensation is based on the length of the term and the amount of the space. And it might be on a per square foot basis, it might be on a percentage basis. I'm not gonna get into that breakdown today. Here's the reality, is that if a small tenant comes along and says, can you help me out? I need 700 square feet of office for a year or two. A commercial broker may look at that and say, there's really not much, if any, of a fee in here. And there may not be many landlords that are really interested in having you go into their space. And suddenly that tenant kind of getting this, you know, not best news says, well, what am I supposed to do? I don't know what I'm doing. This is where I provide guidance. So here's, here's what I tell many, many people. It's okay. There's a solution here. And if you're looking for a retail space, an office space, an industrial space, a storage space, a warehouse space, find the area that you're looking, you're interested in putting your business. Drive it, literally drive it. Find available spaces, make the phone calls, be relentless, don't give up because will they call you back on the first call? Probably not. You need to call again and again. But you need to do this legwork yourself if you don't have a representative. Once you're able to find your own space, now have the best advisors behind you. Now say, hey, commercial broker, can, can you work with me on this? Can I pay you a fee to help me work through a lease? Get a real property attorney if you don't have a good commercial broker. Either one of those individuals can help put a lease together for you. And then you can possibly just pay them by the hour instead of some other compensation structure. So what it means is that small tenants, be prepared to really get to work yourself on this. This is something where you've got to get there behind the wheel, on the phone, trying to locate the space and getting people to call you back and talking to those property owners directly. Listen, I hope this just kind of gets you thinking so you can understand what I'm talking about here. Um, certainly happy to help anybody along the way. If you want to reach out to me, feel free to do that. I'm marketresultscommercial.com. I hope you'll follow us on our YouTube channel, Results in Real Estate. I sure would appreciate that. And if you have any ideas or topics that you want me to talk about, just drop me a note anytime. In the meantime, I appreciate you being with me today. Thanks so much.